Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the books Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the differential diagnosis of Parkinsonism. The differential diagnosis of Parkinsonism movement disorders part 3. Atypical, secondary and other forms of Parkinsonism. Atypical Parkinsonism refers to a group of neurodegenerative conditions that usually are associated with more widespread pathology than are found in Parkinson's disease. So they have more widespread clinical features also. So atypical Parkinsonism refers to a group of neurodegenerative conditions that are usually associated with more widespread pathology than found in Parkinson's disease. These include multiple system atrophy, progressive supranuclear palsy and corticobasal syndrome. As a group, they present with Parkinsonism, that is the rigidity and bradykinesia, but manifest clinical differences from Parkinson's disease, reflecting the differences in their underlying pathology. So, what are the differences between Parkinson's disease and other forms of Parkinsonism? Parkinson's disease and other forms of Parkinsonism. First, in Parkinson's disease, there is a very good response to levodopa. But in other forms of Parkinsonism, there is a poor response to levodopa. Second, in Parkinson's disease, there is a characteristic presence of resting tremor. At least 75% of Parkinson's disease, there is the characteristic resting tremor, which is usually asymmetrical to begin with. Whereas in other forms of Parkinsonism, there is absence of resting tremor. Third, presence of motor asymmetry in Parkinson's disease whereas there is a lack of motor asymmetry in other forms of Parkinsonism. In Parkinson's disease, there is less aggressive clinical course. The course is very slow. Whereas in other forms of Parkinsonism, there is more aggressive clinical course. And in Parkinson's disease, there is a late involvement of speech and gait, whereas in other forms of Parkinsonism, there is early involvement of speech and gait. So the differential diagnosis of Parkinsonism, Parkinson's disease, atypical Parkinsonism, secondary Parkinsonism, neurodegenerative disorders and other forms of Parkinsonism. Parkinson's disease, sporadic, genetic, dementia with Lewy bodies, atypical Parkinsonism, multiple system atrophy, the cerebellar type, the Parkinson type, the progressive supranuclear palsy. Parkinsonism, Richardson's variant, corticopacial syndrome and frontotemporal dementia. For secondary Parkinsonism, it could be drug induced, tumor, infection, vascular, normal pressure hydrocephalus, trauma, liver failure, toxins like carbon monoxide, manganese, MPTP, cyanide, hexane, methanol, carbon disulfide. For neurodegenerative disorders and other forms of Parkinsonism, it could be Wilson's disease, Huntington's disease, neurodegeneration with brain ion accumulation, spinocerebellar ataxia type 3, fragile X associated ataxia tremor Parkinsonism, prion disease, X linked dystonia Parkinsonism, and dopa responsive dystonia. So, now let us discuss the atypical forms of Parkinsonism. Multiple system atrophy, it manifests as a combination of Parkinsonism, cerebellar and autonomic features. The multiple system atrophy cerebellar type shows a characteristic hot cross bun sign on imaging. Progressive supranuclear palsy, it is a form of atypical Parkinsonism that is characterized by restricted vertical movements with particle impairment of downward gaze, hyperextension of the neck with early gait disturbances and falls. Because there is hyperextension of the neck, they cannot see the floor and there is a tendency for falls to occur. Progressive supranuclear palsy shows a characteristic hummingbird sign on imaging. 
cortico basal syndrome both cortical and basal ganglia features are required to make the diagnosis alien lymph phenomenon may be present it is the unwanted movement of one hand which is beyond one's control secondary parkinsonism dopamine blocking agents such as neuroleptics and metoclopramide which is primarily used to treat gastrointestinal problems may induce secondary parkinsonism other forms of parkinsonism dopa responsive dystonia should be considered in individuals aged less than 20 years who present with a clinical picture resembling parkinson's disease parkinsonism can be seen as a feature of variety of other degenerative disorders such as wilson's disease huntington's disease and halliburton spatz disease so features suggesting an atypical or secondary cause of parkinsonism so what are the features so let's talk about history first and then the physical examination in the history if there is an early speech and gait impairment lack of tremor lack of motor asymmetry we have to think of atypical parkinsonism if there is an exposure to neuroleptics it could be drug induced parkinsonism onset prior to the age 40 genetic forms of parkinson's disease if there is liver disease the alternative diagnosis wilson's disease or non wilsonian hepatolenticular degeneration early hallucinations and dementia with later development of parkinson's disease we need to consider dementia with lewy bodies diplopia and impaired down gaze progressive supranuclear palsy poor or no response to an adequate trial of levodopa we have to think of atypical or secondary parkinsonism this is about history and on examination what are the symptoms which suggest a alternative diagnosis to consider dementia as first or early feature think of dementia with lewy body disease prominent orthostatic hypotension multiple system atrophy parkinsonism type prominent cerebellar signs multiple system atrophy cerebellar type slow saccades with impaired down gaze progressive supranuclear palsy high frequency 6 to 10 hertz symmetric postural tremor with a prominent kinetic component we have to think of essential tremor so these are all the important features of the differential diagnosis of parkinsonism the other important points of clinical neurology which is really very useful for clinical exam that is the exam oriented clinical neurology like history taking general examination pertaining to neurology neurologic examination hemiplegia and paraplegia i have put it in points in a book exam oriented clinical neurology written by me dr s srinivas if interested this book could be purchased the other important concepts and points of neurology i have put in a question and answer format which will be very useful for students appearing for oral exams this book is Uh, known as focus neurology written by me dr s srinivas this book is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so if interested this book could be purchased online i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of differential diagnosis of parkinsonism if you have enjoyed it please like share the link but please subscribe my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my fb page dr srinivas concepts thank you bye